No. Daddy. Let me give you the option. No. Because oh. I actually prefer rolling over and seeing my beautiful little daughter's face rather than my wife's. <laughs> Hi guys and Hi. welcome back to At Home with James and Ola. And this week we're joined by Ella, aren't we Ella? You're going to say hello, say hi everyone. And of course we have the amazing Sophie from Hello Magazine. Hi Sophie. Hello guys, how are we today? Good, thank you. Yes, Ella's all ready, aren't you? Are you ready? To <laughs> Oh, she's, oh, she's being silly. <laughs> oh, Ella, lovely to see you all. So today we've got another special guest. We have got Heidi Studder, who is um, a parent coach and founder of Positively Parenthood. Hi, Heidi. Oh, hi, Heidi. guys. Nice to meet you. Or, hi, Ella. Or is it Heidi, hi? Say Heidi, hi. Heidi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so Heidi's joined us today to answer some of James and Oliver's questions. At raising Ella, so that's going to be good. Shall we kick off with a little update, a family update? How are you all doing and how is Ella? What's the news? Ella, touch wood, has been very good, great since she's been on that last course of antibiotics. Well, that's great news. You haven't been very well, have you, Ella? So it's great to hear you're doing well. Touch wood, she stays like this, eh? So I think a good topic to start with is um, choosing clothes because Ella looks fantastic today in her dress and you've told me before how she's very independent with her dressing and she likes to choose her own outfits. Did she choose this outfit today? Yes, you did choose your dress, didn't you? Did she? Mummy helped her. I need to... No. Daddy. Mummy gave her options. No. Oh. No, hang on. Let's be honest about this. This is what happened. You went in and said, first of all, would you like to wear this, Ella? No, I don't want to wear that. I'm going to wear that when fear comes. And then you went to put that one back. And then I got angry that and said, tempting. if you don't wear that one, I'm not playing with you today. So then she said, I want to wear that one. I don't want it to look like a clown. I want it to look nice. <laughs> so um, obviously there is a way. Right. What about this? What about this? I give her options, but then you've got to choose from those options. You can't have everything else that it's in the wardrobe. Oh, bless her. Yeah, no, absolutely. T to be honest with you, it's a really normal thing to go through, especially at this age. Um, and even more so, I find, interestingly, with little girls, right? So she's watching mummy try all of the, the pretty outfits and beautiful dresses, and she's wanting to do the same. So that's absolutely fine. You have to decide as a family. It kind of comes back to your parenting style, to be honest. And what we're looking at is... Do you give her choices? So children of her age have two cups. So I use my mug as an example. One is your love cup and one is what we call your control cup. Okay, and they need both of those filled every day. So the love one, pretty easy, attention, praise, etc. The control one is the one that can impact things like getting dressed, eating, bedtime, which we'll come on to. <laughs> and if they don't feel they have enough responsibility and control throughout the day on different tasks, they'll try and push back on other things to make it even more difficult. So it could be just a preference for, you know, Ella, your dress, beautiful pink dresses with sequins, and that's lovely, but it might be that you want to start giving her options and more responsibilities at other times in the day too, so that she feels like she has a say in other areas, so that maybe becoming, sorry, getting dressed becomes less of a battle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it might be that you, I mean, do you, do you involve her in like household chores and stuff, like help me hang up the washing or love? She wants yeah. to get involved Loves in any we do. Um, she's a bit yeah. of a, she is a bit of a control freak, so she, last year. <laughs> Because she wants yeah. to take Mommy, over and do, do it. This? Can I help you with beans, taking the beans uh, out? She wants to help. So she's running the house already, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> but this is the thing. I think that's amazing. So you give her lots of responsibilities, lots of choices throughout the day. But what we want to do at this age is not give what we call like open-ended choices. So when it comes back to the dresses, and you've kind of touched on this, you go, would you like to wear the red stripy dress? Or would you like to wear the purple sweater and pink leggings, whichever? But that is kind of your option. So James, back to what you said, if she then wants to wear something else, it is okay actually to say no. Yeah. And I think what's happened is the whole kind of positive parenting, gentle parenting, which is amazing. We're really responsive to our children and that's fab. But what it has done has made a lot of parents concerned to say no. 
when actually it's okay to say no to wear a netting dress to nursery that you know is going to get coated in paint. Exactly. So you might have just a nursery drawer and you might just say, pick anything in this drawer, but yeah. these are your nursery yeah. clothes. Yes. Yeah. No. Something like that. I, I find that with my daughter, giving her a choice of a few things, a few things that I don't mind her wearing. Exactly. They need that cup full. And what, what you could also do is have like one day a week and it could be a weekend where you go, it's a yes day. I'm going to say yes to anything that you wear today. You get to choose today on a Saturday. As long as they're warm, that's okay. Otherwise, just let them show that personality. And that's quite difficult when you're like me and you want them to look a certain way, like nice little shirt, nice chinos, off we go to a party and they just want to wear football stuff. <laughs> but also people have become scared to say no, haven't they? Parents yeah. have become, we've swung the other way. We've gone from like, this is what you're wearing. There's absolutely no choice yeah. to wear what you want and do what you like and be whoever you want to be, which yeah. is amazing in some respects, but also therefore means that people are not saying no to things that actually, you know, you can't wear that still. It's just not possible. We try we try to pick and choose our battles with her because we know it's exactly. very strong willed and I don't want to knock that out of her either because I actually like, quite like the fact that she's she, she knows what she wants she's her. got a bit of fight about her and I don't want to so, so get rid the, of that either yeah I think it's striking a balance it's the same with everything that we're going to talk about really but it's just that balance between you, you're allowed to have boundaries as parents. It's really important, but also it's great to give them choice and just don't forget about that control. Like if she wants that control, she's obviously quite happy to have it. Try and implement it all across your day. And that might just help at the margin with getting dressed too. That leads us quite nicely onto the other thing we were going to talk about was taking risks and yes. taking healthy risks. And it can be quite scary as a parent to let your child... We, do these things, climbing a really high tree or going really fast on their scooter. You don't want them to get hurt, but you want them to have fun. And if you keep them too safe, yeah, it's so boring for them. So what what do you think about that, James Lola? Do you have a battles with that? Yes, we've got that battle all the time. Like, for example, climbing frames. We are very much, oh, be careful. Oh, don't fall. Careful, you're going to slip. No, you can't wear that skirt on a climbing plane because you're going to slip. You're going to step on it, you're going to trip up. Um, so being really cautious about things like that, where other people, other friends of ours, oh, they'd be fun, they follow of us, so what? You know, they have to learn, which I agree to some extent, but also I want to protect her. I don't want to fall over and break her arm. So it's very hard. Maybe that is because we are older parents as well. I think when you're younger, you're a bit more relaxed about things. And because we're older, we're like, no, 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 careful. Uh, don't do that. Yeah. We do and I do quite a lot as well. Like I'm scared of heights, okay? But she, she's been going on about this thing. Of... <laughs> it's like this indoor climbing, climbing. stream where, where they put a harness on you and they let you climb all these things. And she's wanted to do it since she was like two and a half years old. Yeah. But she had to wait till she was four. So we went there and put her on and she's straight to the top of this thing. We actually did something with Hello Magazine about it, didn't we? So she's quite fearless. Same as when she's on her scooter and her bike and everything. Um, so she's fearless. And it's knowing what we should allow her to do and what we shouldn't allow her to do. How much freedom should we give her? I think it's a really hard one. But I think, again, it comes back to the same point, which it, ultimately is a balance, right? So first of all, with scooters, you can make them safer. So, for example, obviously she should have a helmet on. You can also get knee pads and elbow pads if you want to, especially if you are going to st skate parks often because that does make it safer. So... There's things we can do to make it safer, like a helmet and things like that. She's also at a brilliant age, I would say, where you can really talk to her about it. So before you go there, you can talk about, you know, when we're at the top of the ramp, what do we do with our feet? How far across does the scooter need to be? So you can actually talk her through the process, talk her through the details and say things like, if you feel scared just as you're at the top of the ramp, what are you going to do? So I think a lot of preparation for what you're about to go. So we're going to go to the skate park. There are some big ramps. How are we going to do this? So actually talk her through it, number one. Number two, you do the classic thing, which all of us do, and I try not to do it every time I go to the park, but I say it even though I know the kind of right thing to do, is to not say, be careful. Be careful, be careful, stop, don't be, you know, it's, it naturally as a parent, of course you're going to say that. Oh, it's so hard not to say it, but what we want to say instead, we want to give them autonomy over working it out themselves because otherwise they will. Yeah, they'll take less risks. They'll be too concerned ultimately longer term to try new things. We want that in them. Of course we do. So we can just rephrase that. So instead of be careful, you might go, Ella, 
look where you're putting your feet. How far is that gap before, between the, let's say she's yeah. climbing a net or something in the park. How big is that gap? Do you think you can reach your foot up? What do you need to do to get your foot onto the top? So just rephrase it and use language that means that you're kind of helping and helping her question and think about what she's about to do rather than stopping her by going, no, stop, be careful. Oh my gosh, you're gonna break your arm. It's really easy to do. Yeah. Like all of those things are just natural. They come out of our mouths as parents, they just do. Because of course we don't want them to fall and break an arm, but they're also gonna stop them ultimately trying to do the things that we actually want them to do. Because they do learn, unfortunately, from having a little tumble, a little fall, obviously hopefully not a broken arm, but if you can rephrase that language around what she's trying, I think that will be really powerful for her and for you guys as well. I can't take away your anxiety around her falling because I think that's really natural and normal as parents. But what we can do is open up a little bit of space for her to be able to do a bit more and you guys stepping back. And maybe not as much as your friends. I think everyone's different, but a little bit more than you maybe are. And just having a yeah. bit more confidence to say, I'll coach her through it but I'm not going to kind of be right next to her, slightly wrapping her in cotton wool. And, um, and do you think it's different with boys and girls? I don't think so, really, no. I think I know a lot of boys who, mine are really cautious. They're not like big climbers and things like that, whereas obviously Ella is risk taker. Yeah. She's not too concerned. Well, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's a massive difference. I meant with, like, as a parent, I, I don't know because I don't have a boy, but I think if I had a boy... I'd be a bit more relaxed. I know it sounds really bad and people will probably say that it's terrible that I'm saying this. But if I had a little boy, I'd be a bit more like, well, if he falls off, he falls off, he's going to get. But because it's my little girl, I feel, I don't know because I don't have a boy, but I do think I would be different if I had a boy. I think you're right. Whether it's right or wrong, I think you're right. And I think if you're a dad of a little boy you're probably a bit more like come on lad like you know my husband gives my son a lot of um, you know he wants him to climb he's like why aren't you doing it type thing whereas with a girl I'm sure it's a bit more like oh no be careful I, I totally get that and that's absolutely fine again it comes back to we're allowed to have boundaries as parents yeah okay yeah. that's good yeah, yeah. James and uh, Ola do you find because she's been unwell you're a bit more protective of her um I, I think I uh, not necessarily. I don't think so. I, I've never really thought of that before. Um, I just think that it, I don't know. The, I don't know. Like she's, you know, obviously a little princess. She's the only child. She's. Um, she's I don't know. Very, I think there's a combination of a lot of things. Um, having her and then going straight into lockdown. Uh, having her during the period when I lost my dad made her become having her for IVF and uh yeah things like that you know really wanted and her being so ill her having the um heart uh scare um all those things I think maybe has made us a lot um closer to her a lot more protective of her hence moving on to something else is this co-sleeping um uh. Thing, yes. Everyone at home is going to go. I'm scared to tell you what about it. My honest. dad would be looking. My dad would be looking down on me now, going, "Son, you've made a." His words would be, "You've made a rod for your own back." <laughs> That's exactly what he would say. I think you need to set the scene here first, guys. You've told me you've got a ginormous bed, haven't you? We what have size a. Bed? It's an emperor, so it's like two meters wide. An so emperor. Really oh, this space for everyone. <laughs> Amazing. Family bed. <laughs> Three pillows and everyone's got their yeah. own pillow. Very funny because we went to the doctors when Ella was ill and uh, we were showing the video of Ella throwing up in bed. And even the doctor said, Ella, is that a pillow between mummy and daddy's pillows in mummy and daddy's bed? Yeah. She's going, yeah. Yeah, she did. The thing is, she she goes to sleep in her own bed. She starts off in her own bed. So we read her a bedtime story, tuck her in, give her kisses. Um, Ola has to stay with her until she falls asleep because I refuse to. Um, but that <laughs> is made a rod for her, her own back there. I told her that very early on, but you're quite happy to still do it because she said it's not going to be forever. So she goes to sleep in her own bed, but then she will wake up around 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, wandering, 
jump up on our bed, occasionally say she needs to go to the toilet. She goes to the toilet, get in between us and fall asleep. And we don't hear a peep from her until the morning. So it's, we've never, with Ella, we've never really had uh, sleep deprivation, let's say. We've always found that when she's been in between us, she slept so well. But also, on beginning, we did try to take her back to her bed. Yeah. Um, but then it got to the point that we were so exhausted yeah. by it, we would have We were not up. up. We so did, we gave up. we didn't stick with it. So yeah. as it stands now, are you happy with her still sleeping in your bed? Does it bother you or is it working? I think at this point, she comes in at one, we, we are asleep, she, she just jumps in, it's fine. She goes to the toilet. You know, and she's quite happy being there and she just goes to sleep and we sleep till the morning. So I suppose it works. And I think now breaking that and now taking her back to her own bed would have been really like bad. Like I know it would have been really hard work. She does have this problem of leaving us. And I do believe that maybe is part of the fact that she does sleep with us. We are extremely close with her. We don't have a normal nine to five job, so we are around her a lot of the time. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tough one up. So, yeah, I don't want to hear really. Okay. Tell me, Bob. Go on, Heidi. Let's hear it. <laughs> you know what? It's so interesting because you're ready for me to like tell you off. And actually, all I'm going to do is say, all of your language you just used actually really worries me. Like the fact that you're saying, I'm wrong, it's not the right thing to do. Says who? right? There is no one right way to do parenting. And as my kind of motto, positively parenthood, our kind of thing is literally your family, your way. We do not have a, you cannot co-sleep with your child idea or policy or whatever else. We just very much look at an individual situation and say, right, does it work for you guys? And you've just quite openly said it does work and we love it. And we go back to sleep and we're not sleep deprived and she's doing great. And actually we don't really even notice her there apart from when she creeps in it's working so you don't need to change anything and I think that's so important when it comes to sleep is that you do what works for your family Mm -hmm. so you don't you honestly don't need to change it and I think that's quite powerful and do you know what it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing doesn't even matter really what anyone else would say about it and actually to your point Ola it's not actually that hard with a child of this age because you can talk to them And you can talk about, right, in the evenings, you know, mummy's got things to do now. And if you did want to make that change and sort of step away from helping her to sleep, we could absolutely do that. But as you just said, she's starting school, she's your baby. You want to do it. And if you want to do it, honestly, don't let anyone stop you. We just didn't want to do anything that's going to maybe affect her. Do you know what I mean? I don't really care about what it does to us because I actually prefer rolling over and seeing my beautiful little daughter's face rather than my wife's. So... Ouch! I like it. There's going to become a point where I believe as a man and a father, it's too old. Um, yeah, and yeah. there's going to have to be that transition when we are going to... We've already started having those conversations. Yeah. I think when the school comes in, she's be, she's going to be around all the children. I think that will just be natural that she's going to be, you know, yeah. I think so anyway. The point is, like, I really don't want you guys to feel judged for it. I think it's really important that you are able to turn around and say to someone, we co-sleep for half the night and it works for us. Yeah, yeah. And that's absolutely fine. It really it does. does work. It does work. Um, I mean, as soon as she gets in between us and hits that pillow, she's gone. Oh. Like literally yeah. within seconds like, and we sleep so well. Yeah. And you know what, guys? I went through this too. So my son would try and come into our bed, but we could get no sleep. He moved so much and it was a disaster. So I was really firm about him staying in his own bed. My daughter, like Ella, would come in halfway through the night. but She was such a still sleeper. And I kind of loved her snuggling up. Um, and we just went with it. For, not every night, but quite a lot of the time. And then I found when she started school, she was so tired. She just... Straight away, slept through the night and didn't come home. So I think you might find that. Yeah. Like sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and she'd be laying looking at me and she'd just be stroking my face. So that'd be the first oh, thing well, I wake up to is she's just there stroking my face. And it's, it's not nice daddy-daughter goals, right? 
<laughs> these little things like that that I just think are so sweet and so cute. Is Ella there? I want to hear what Ella thinks about that. Go sit down here. Yeah, you can. Do you like sleeping with mummy and daddy, or do you think when you start school, when you're big, when you're big girl, you're going to start sleeping on your own in your own bed? Yeah. Are you excited to start school? No. Why not? You don't want to go to big school. No. Why not? That's okay. We school when we're five. When you're five. Oh, right. Okay. I was just thinking about how you're saying to her, you're going to go into a big bed when you start school. Be really careful about that because in her head, that is two massive things. So just don't put the pressure on. Not that you are, but I would just kind of try and separate the two slightly. And if it naturally happens when she starts school, great. But I wouldn't make it a kind of it has to happen as she starts school because otherwise she's going to put the two, two, two together and then she might get a bit nervous yeah, yeah, about yeah, the starting yeah, yeah. school. Yeah. So I would just separate the two. And also what you were just saying in terms of like, are you excited to start school? And she's like, mm, not really. Just leave it. That's fine. So you don't have to be like, why not, et cetera, because we want her to kind of naturally come to the point where she's excited. And she may, she may or may not be. I think she will because she sounds like she's pretty outgoing and she'll be up for it. But I think just drip feed that she's starting. Don't ever put too much kind of pressure on it. And are you mummy's girl or daddy's girl? Are you daddy's girl? Uh <laughs> Do you love your daddy? She's daddy's girl. That's it. I'm not gonna stay with you when you fall asleep. <laughs> and your mum Daddy's putting you to bed tonight. She, oh. She's a wind up merchant as well. I know where she gets that from. No, no idea. No idea where that's from. Oh, but it's been so lovely chatting to you all today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Heidi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Really nice to meet you all. Yeah, nice to meet you. Great tips, great advice, which I think we can all use. And let us know in the comments if any of this stuff has helped you. If you can relate to what myself and Oliver are going through, you could be the complete opposite to us. Um, and thank you, Heidi. And I'm sure you've given lots of other people food for thought as well on many of the topics. So thank you so much. See you next week. Say bye. Bye, bye Emma. Bye. bye.